That's what the line was again. I believe it was it makes me want to fart. Is that correct? The second line? Yeah, they don't remember. <laughs> but in the original pilot, I think they did the theme song and I literally I was holding like what was it, a golf club or a Fishing. See, I don't do none of that, right? <laughs> Teach a man to fish. You know, you heard that story. I eat meat and chicken. I've never heard that story. Can you tell it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> but long story short, so the, the, the prop literally came apart in my hands. And because I grew up in the valley, I always wanted to be a rapper. So, like, when it said fart in my mind and it broke apart, my mind did the whole ghetto rap thing. So I went, oh, this will be funny. This thing came apart. And it literally ended up in, in all the episodes. So it's an amazing little note to my rap career that's going to start after today. I can't wait to see the 8 Mile movie on that one. The girl from the hard streets and salute your shorts, man. Camp, I don't want it for life. <laughs> So uh, when you were filming the show, did it feel like camp? Did you feel like you were actually at camp or did it just feel like you were just doing any kind of television show? I think every day on the set, I mean, I know it kind of sounds uh, Pollyanna and, and cheesy and nostalgic, but it really was. I mean, from that perspective, being that age and walking into this soundstage and the door opening and you smell the, the, the paint and all the chemicals from the facades and the, and the sawdust and I mean, it was, it was, it was a, look, it was an orgy of creativity. I mean, it really was, it, it was, it just, it was. And, and who, as a kid, what could be better, what could be better than going to camp than being on TV pretending that you're at camp? I mean, really, I mean, what, what could be better? So, yeah, yeah, because you had all the fantasy in, in your head, and, and of course we're all playing these archetypal roles, but, um, you know, Steve, Steve I talked in an interview, a podcast that he did about, about really wanting to choose actors that were, or had some element of, of their real characters. So, so there was an authenticity that we brought to the characters, because we really were, in a way, typecast for our archetype. And so, I really did have a point, I, I know I did. <laughs> oh, so, so it, was really, it was really easy to, to feel comfortable because I don't really consider myself a talented actor at all. I, I was Sponge and I just had a work ethic and was a cute kid and happened to be the guy that picked the role. So, I was at camp, that's the short answer. I, I really was, it was very magical. <laughs> what you mean by what was the question again just, did it feel like you were actually at a summer camp or did it just always feel like you were doing it uh, yeah I needed a job literally I had a big family um, <laughs> so I was really thrilled to get a paycheck but to be honest with you I, I went to camp when I was young um, it was a fat camp <laughs> hey shut up people go and lose weight it's great. Um, no, I, I, I went to a camp called camp uh, Mac, Mac Strauss, I think it was funded by him or something, but um, that was my only experience and um, I didn't have a lot of friends and so to do this was actually pretty dang cool and to meet everybody and again, I don't have a big family so working every day like getting up at 9 a.m. and meeting, you know, hanging out with these talented people and playing basketball and shooting scenes, it felt really like a family. So in terms of camp, it didn't feel like a camp, it just felt like a great experience. Like now looking back on it, you get it. So, you know, these guys are my family and today is amazing to see all of you at our family reunion. So, thank you so much. Yeah, I really did feel like we were at camp. Um, I remember for me, a lot of the sports. I had to like, uh, when we had like a tennis episode, they put me in tennis lessons. So I learned how to play tennis. Like I knew how to, you know, play around, but I learned how to play tennis. Um, and, uh, you know, basketball and just all the different, uh, softball, like I had to practice all night. I practiced on an underhand swing and I think we ended up doing an overhand swing, but uh, thanks dad. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun and um, getting to be outdoors and having school outside and being in bunks and just um, just having fun with all the, the cast and the crew. It was, it was It was a blast and it was, like, we, I, it wasn't a job, it was just us being in the woods all the time. It was fun. Uh, 
I never went to camp, so it's as close as to camp as I came, so essentially it was camp. But more than that, it was. It was a big family, and you know, we had uh, sort of the, I guess, the common area there on the other side of the stage, the warehouse there. And, uh, you know, we all came and had lunch, and hey, it was like a family for what, two years? Three years? Yeah, well, no, no. 26 episodes. 26 episodes, it was a family. It was awesome. Uh, for me, uh, it was, I went to camp, it was nothing like camp. Not at all. Uh, I was kind of in a weird and unique position. I was sort of bridged the gap between the crew and the adults, and then you know, the, the cast that were primarily pre-pubescent teens. So it was, it was a blast. They had their place to play when we were at the warehouse and hang out, and Danny would bring his guitar, and we'd jam. He and I would jam a little bit, and he'd teach me how to play. I still can't play. We, we did a kick-ass version of More Than Words one night. It was yeah, we did, count, <laughs> we did Counting Crows, which we may revive today. Um, not likely, but... And then we wrote, when we weren't at the warehouse studio in North Hollywood, we would either be doing exteriors at Franklin Canyon or off Coldwater there or Tree People or something. And that was really where it felt like we were hanging out outside. And it was nice. We, we had a really good time, a balance between play and these guys were trying to learn at a very young age what a long day of work is about. And Larry and his fine above the line help would try and keep them in order. And they'd bend my ear on occasion and ask for my help. But it was, it was a lot of fun. We, we really, for the most part, were learning as we went. Nickelodeon hadn't done a lot of this type of single camera stuff, if any, right? They hadn't done any of anything. We were the, we, you know, were the first off, off that ledge. Um, but we had a really, really good time. And we kept it light. What you saw and what you see in those episodes were us pretty much playing. I have two of these. I liked summer camp. I, went, I worked at a summer camp for 12 years in Maine, and so I got to relive all my camp years with, with these guys, and I got to torment all the kids. What? Put that down. Hello. This is Dr. Khan. I'm at camp. <laughs> So um, one of the one of the reasons we I, I, we cast these kids was because we wanted the kids to be kids, and that was sort of the, the, the real a, a real special thing, is that we didn't want makeup to come running in with and, and do their hair. We didn't want them in makeup and with lipstick on. We wanted their just the way they woke up, their hair crazy, and, uh, and 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 if they got braces, that was fine. I remember one parent came to me and said, "I've got I've got some terrible news. My my daughter wants to get braces." It was like, get, get them. She should, she should have straight teeth the rest of her life. I mean, just because she's on a TV show, you know, I'm not, I, don't, I don't want to have her have a, you know, a terrible overbite, you know? So get the braces, it's okay. So we want kids being kids, and, and, and that's why these guys were, were so great, because they were, they were really natural, and they, they, brought this, they, they brought their own great energy yeah, to the to show. Yeah, and just to add to that, I think, I think what you may You not, brought I'm crazy energy I'm to it, like a Don, crazy I'm Don Rock. <laughs> It wasn't a slick show. It wasn't slick for us. We were just hanging out. He kept it light, and it wasn't about... I think when you see TV shows with kids in it now, the cuts are all two-second long cuts. It's really fast. It's slick. The music, boom. It's just... It's kind of old, cool TV, where we just... What, you, what we did, you saw. It wasn't anything bigger than that. I had just... Gra I, I, I had been a couple years out of film school, and I was like... Nickelodeon's giving me money to make a television show. This is unbelievable. You know, they're giving me all the toys to play with in the world. And so I thought, it's never going to happen again. So I had to jam in as much entertainment as I possibly could. And I wanted to do my little cool film school tricks. I wanted to, I wanted to make it, I, I love the Three Stooges, and I loved What's Up Doc, and I love uh, 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 Woody Allen. So I wanted to try to get in as much di different kinds of comedy as I possibly could. And so we got the kids doing physical comedy, and, 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 and Kirk especially, I think, bore the, the, the brunt of most of the physical, really sort of the physical abuse. And, and, and there was... Wait a minute. Uh, 
<laughs> Train tracks. There was. Yeah. I mean, Twinkies. That's true. You you all got you all got you got you got your you got your pies in the face. Does everyone everyone got everyone got filthy and muddy and yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I you got dirt in the mouth. I lost an eye thanks to the cursed skull. The cursed skull. Okay, wait a minute, Sponge. What happened to you? What did you? What were your? Uh, what, what were your? What were your ailments? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, ongoing now. Yeah, no, you're. <laughs> <laughs> As a of the Get show, out a pen. I mean, mostly, yeah. mostly just therapy from. from I mean, you know. You know <laughs> Michael, what were? You, what, what happened to you? What? How did you get hurt? Melon, the cassava melon. Yes, the melon. It was supposed to be a skull, but you guys put two sticks in it. Yes. According to the camera, we had to be closer because I I take up a lot of space, and um, <laughs> so we had to get closer for the shot. And Danny Cooksey is holding the melon here with the sticks, and me and Eric or whoever. Sticks. Or, <laughs> I have a list. Has that not been established? <laughs> so, Tell, tell them about the, the time when you had to say. No, thank you, everybody, for coming today. <laughs> wait, wait, tell, tell, wait, wait, the, the worst part is, he had to go audition for Steve Slavkin at Salute Your Shorts. Go ahead, try that one. I think the worst part is, 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 is Jewish. <laughs> Jewish people. No. So he had to hold the stick or the melon, and then we had a scene where we all agree and we go, yeah, or, and then he made up a name for a freak from a movie called The Freaks. And it was a character named Slitzy. Oh, Slitzy, yeah. And we all went, yeah, we're in the, the, the order of the skull. Slitzy! And then I bent down my head, and the damn stick went right in my eye. And I have a permanent salute your shorts line that tells me, hey, I was on a show. Everywhere I go, it's like, hey, you were on a Nickelodeon show that never paid for your injury. 